In this video, we extend FlowWise to use Cloud Tables to store values online. Cloud Tables provide an API, but the API is not listed on the Rapid API Hub. To connect them together, we can use Yarn to add Cloud Tables API as a new FlowWise dependency. Then we can use the API in Custom Tools and OpenAI agent and use function calling to store values in the cloud. Here, for example, we use a custom tool to store stock alarms in one data set and use another custom tool to store stock orders in another data set. After saving our data in the cloud, we can embed the tables in other applications and extend the functionality. So let's first explore cloud tables. For those developers who worked with PHP and WordPress, data tables is a known library, and the editor is the online editing tool for the tables. Cloud tables combines these two in a cloud infrastructure and provides seamless integration of the tables in other application and framework. You can access and manipulate cloud tables with the API in many languages, including Node.js. You can check the functionality on cloudtables.com. Here you can see and test a responsive online table that can hide extra fields, do sorting and pagination and provides search functionality out of the box. You can search, for example, for a city like London and select a row from the result set and edit the row. The changes are reflected immediately and the table is updated. To test the service, you can start a free trial and create your first dataset. A dataset is like a table. Every dataset had its own unique ID, which we will use later in our API to reference the dataset. After creating the dataset, it's time to create the data points, which are like the columns of the table. Each data point has a unique ID, like dp-1, dp-2, and so on. We will use these data point IDs later in the API to assign our properties to the columns. For the alarm data set, we create three data points. Two text data points for symbol and company and one number data point with two decimal places for the alarm price. Next we create another data set for our order data. The order data set has its own unique ID, which we will use in our second custom tool. This time, we add four data points, three text data points, and one number data point. It is the same procedure as the alarm data set, but notice that the data point IDs are sequential and do not start from one again. Instead, we have dp-4, 5, 6, and 7. So our two data sets are ready now. In the security section, we have two pre-configured API keys, one with read-write permission and one with read-only permission. We do not have any billing plan yet. And in the settings section, we see our web address and the assigned subdomain, which acts like our application ID. You can complete the registration and give your login information to access the service later and on other devices. After the registration is done, we see in the dashboard the onboarding progress and some statistics about the usage of the service. Now we can go to the next step 
and start extending flowwise. To add dependencies to flowwise, we use yarn. In the more recent versions of Node.js, you can use yarn by enabling the core pack. Keep in mind that for enabling core pack, you need to run the command prompt as administrator. Here, we first check the installed version of Node.js. In our case, it is version 20.4.0. Next, we type core pack enable to enable core pack and to be able to use yarn. The process of adding dependencies to Flowwise is described in the documentation. Navigate to docs.flowwiseai.com, then to Tools, and then to Custom Tools. Then navigate to the section Additional Dependencies, and here you find the instruction on how to add additional dependencies to Flowwise. Also, we have to do some configuration which we will do in a few moments. But first, let's navigate to Cloud Tables to the Node.js part to check the name of the library to be added. In the documentation is mentioned that we can add the library by yarn at cloudtables-api. So let's start by cloning the Flowwise repo. We navigate to github.com, Flowwise AI and Flowwise, and copy the HTTPS link. Back to our project folder, we clone the Flowwise repo. As mentioned in the Flowwise documentation, we change to the Flowwise directory, then to packages, and then to the components directory. We clear the screen to have more room and type yarn at cloudtables-api. This will add the cloudtables API to our project and depending on the speed of your machine, this will take some time. After the prompt comes back, we go two levels up to get to the project root and type yarn install. This will take again some while and when the prompt comes back we can type yarn build and wait till the build process is done. After the installation is done we need to do some configuration. So we start Visual Studio Code. Here we see there is one change and cloud tables API is added to the dependencies. We can now close this file. We still need to do some configuration. So we go to the server folder and copy and paste the .env.sample file and rename it to .env, but inside the server folder. In the .env file, we can uncomment the debug instruction to see what's going on under the hood. And the next change is to uncomment tool underscore function underscore external underscore dev and assign our library to it. Now the installation and configuration of Flowwise are done and we can start Flowwise by typing npx Flowwise start. Flowwise starts listening to port 3000. We navigate to localhost port 3000 and notice the new menu credentials and click add to set our OpenAI key. We gave it a name like Flowwise Cloud Tables key and navigate to OpenAI and create a new secret key. The name is optional, but we can give it the same name. Create and copy the key and go back to Flowwise and place the key 
as the OpenAI API key and add the credential to use it later in the flow. After the key is set, we go to the marketplace. Scroll down and select OpenAI Agent and click on Use Template to start creating our flow. We remove unwanted tools to have a clean start. In Chat OpenAI, we select our just created OpenAI key, select GPT 3.5 Turbo 0613 and reduce the temperature to be more deterministic. Now comes the main part. We create our first tool and give it a name like Store Stock Price Alarm in Cloud Tables and a description like This tool stores stock alarms in the cloud table. To set an alarm, it needs the symbol of the stock and the company name and the price. Then we add the properties. First, we add symbol as string and the description ticker symbol of the stock and make it require. Next, we add company as string with the description company name of the stock and make it require too. And finally, we add price, but this time we choose number as type and give the description set alarm for this stock price and make it require two. After the three properties are set, we can go and implement our function in JavaScript. I paste the code in the box, but to have the syntax highlighting while going through the code, I paste the function to Visual Studio Code 2. On the first line, we require the newly added dependency cloud tables API. All the steps we have done till now were to be able to add this line to our script. Next, we create an API using the subdomain and our API key. The client ID and client name are optional. But the dataset ID is very important as we want to store our properties in the alarm dataset. So we need to use the ID associated with the alarm dataset. Furthermore, we must use the data point IDs related to the columns of the alarm dataset. We assign the data point DP-1 to our property symbol, which will proceed with the dollar sign and so on. When storing the data in the cloud is successful, we get a result from cloud tables and we console lock the result to see it in our terminal and return a success message back to ChatGPT. If we have an error, we again log to the console and inform ChatGPT about the error. To see the corresponding values on cloud tables, we navigate to the alarm dataset. Here you see the ID of the alarm dataset or table. Next, you see the corresponding data point IDs of each of the data points or columns. In the embed section for Node.js, you see the corresponding embed code. It includes the subdomain or application ID and the API key, which can be seen in the security section and has read and write permission. In the cloud tables Node.js API, you can see more information on how to integrate the code. And if you scroll down, you see a link to dataset insert. And in dataset insert, you see a related example. Here you can see how to assign values to the data points. Back to Flowwise, we need to click on Add to save our first custom flow. Now comes the second custom tool to save our order data. We create our second tool and give it a name like Place a buy or sell order for a stock. 
and a description like place a buy or sell order for the stock of a company given by a ticker symbol. This time we need to add four properties. First we add the symbol as string and the description ticker symbol of the stock and make it require. Next we add the company as string with the description company name of the stock and make it require two. Next we add a type as string and give it a description like order type which can be buy or sell and inform ChatGPT to use one of these two values. And finally we add the price but this time we choose the number as type and give the description price of the stock to execute the order. After the four properties are set, we add our function in the JavaScript function box. The code is similar to the first tool, but with some changes. The subdomain and our API key are the same, but the dataset ID is different, and it is the dataset ID of the order dataset. This time we assign our four properties proceeding with the dollar sign to data point IDs dp-4 to dp-7. Notice that the data point ID has an ongoing ID and does not start from one for each data set. The rest of the code is just logging and returning information based on the success of the operation. To check again, we go to cloud tables, but this time to the order dataset and check the ID of the dataset and the corresponding four data point IDs, which start from dp-4 to dp-7. The embed section is the same, so we go back to flowwise and click add to save the second tool too. Now it's time to connect the dots and save the flow and give it a name like Flowwise Cloud Tables. We can now test our flow. We open the chat box and make it bigger. Here comes our first question. What is a ticker symbol? ChatGPT doesn't need any function calling to answer this question. And it answered the question and gives back some examples. Next we write set an alarm for Apple at $200. This time ChatGPT uses our first custom tool to store this information in cloud tables in the alarm dataset. The part with you will be notified when the stock price reaches that level is a ChatGPT hallucination as we do not have implemented this functionality yet. Next, we write, place a buy order for Apple at $210. This time, ChatGPT uses our second tool to sort this information in the order dataset. As you can see, we did not provide any symbol and ChatGPT uses its knowledge till September 2021 to find out the ticker symbol. Next. We put a cell order to see if the type field is filled correctly. To test if ChatGPT uses the symbols of the first prompt using buffer memory or uses train data, we asked to set an alarm for Netflix at 400. It successfully finds the symbol and adds the alarm. Next comes the danger of using ChatGPT for mission critical data like trading. We just say add an order at 500 and do not mention buy or sell or which stock. ChatGPT wants to help and assumes we want to buy Netflix and stores this information in our table. So let's go to cloud tables and check the saved data. Our first custom tool has successfully added the entries to the alarm dataset. And our second custom tool has successfully added the entries to the order dataset. 
you may want to change some data or even delete some entries online. If you are happy with the data, you can use one of the stylings like Bootstrap 5 and embed the result in an intranet site and extend the example. As you can remember, we had set the debug mode to true and added some console log statements. So we can see what's going on under the hood. As you can see in the logs, our first prompt about the ticker symbol did not use any function call. And the answer is in the content part. Our next prompt used our first custom tool with the arguments AAPL and Apple and 200. When we scroll down, we find our next function call to the second function with the arguments AAPL and Apple and Buy and 210. And the answer from cloud tables with the ID 11. You can use this information to improve the chatbot further and add some error handling and automation to it. Keep in mind that this example is just a starting point. Good luck.